know this, we have to know the basic structure of the computers, how it is organized. The instruction set architecture is the main thing, is a programmer visible machine interface. Perform these things that is accepting the input, processing it and producing the output. It is also called as the PDA or personal digital assistant like this. students welcome to the next session of digital electronics i am dr somyashree from department of computer science vidyashram first grade college let's uh, start this session in this session i am going to start with the fourth unit of the digital electronics the fourth unit is all about knowing the basic things of the computer working how what are the different categories of computers how they are going to access the cpu memory input and output units all these things we'll get to know in this fourth unit let's start this session so our session starts with the introduction to the computers which is a most widely used digital device and is more popular and you are all going to use it for all the next two and a half years, okay? The computer, as we know, is an electronic device, isn't it? So it is an electronic device as well as it is a digital device. So electronic digital device is the computer which are used to get a input or accept the information make some processing and operations or processing on those collected information and give a output or produce an output. So computer is an electronic, digital electronic device which accepts the input, process it and produces the output. This is the basic thing or basic definition of the term computer. Let's learn more about the computers. So, we have the computer architecture. How does the computer is organized? How it is going to work? We know about the components that we generally use in a computer, isn't it? We'll be having a monitor, we'll be having a keyboard, we'll be having a box which is called as the CPU, we'll be having a mouse to move the pointers over the monitor. These are all we have done from the school level, isn't it? Now, it is the time to know how does it is working? What is the inner working principle of the computer? To know this, we have to know the basic structure of the computers, how it is organized, how it is assembled and how it is made to work and cooperate with each other, the connected components, okay? The computer architecture is to know the development of the computer and working of the computer. So computer architecture in general covers three aspects of the computer design. They are computer hardware, which is going, which is, which all you are going to view, instruction set architecture, because as we know, computers cannot think by themselves. They need to be instructed. Somebody has to instruct the computers to perform something and the computer organization, how they are organized and how they are working. So computer architecture deals with these three things. Let's know more about these three things. Okay. The computer hardware consists of the electronic circuits as we know about the basics of the computers or the digital devices from last three units, isn't it? Like we have the number systems, gates, combinational circuits and the sequential circuits, which are the basis for this hardware and working of the computers for everything. Now, the computer hardware consists of the different circuits, that is the combinational and the sequential circuits, various displays, magnetic and optical storage devices and 
communication facilities communication facilities is nothing but the network here we have the architecture the general architecture which consists the memory input output control unit and the alu that is arithmetic logic unit let's know much about this the instruction set architecture is the main thing is a programmer visible machine interface it is a programmer visible machine interface such as instruction set we have the set of instruction registers will be having memory organization how to organize the memory and how to handle the errors that are arising in a computer so the instruction set architecture is the main one which is a programmer visible which is available or visible to the programmers who are using who are developing the computers we are just the end users the programmers are the one who are going to make the computer work okay so it is instruction set is a interface or set of programs visible to the other programmers so which are instruction set registers different memories and the method of handling an exception there are two mainly approaches in these machines or instruction set that is the complex instruction set computer or is called as the cisc there will be machines which use this complex instruction set they are called as cisc machines and we have the risc even though it is named as risc the risc name indicates it is the reduced instruction set computer so we have risc machines that is the machines with reduced set but the name given is it is a risc okay so we have two machines cisc and risc along with that the computer organization includes the high level aspects of a design so how to design the interfaces such as organizing or arrangement of the memory system the bus structure bus is nothing but connecting the components how do you connect the components and the design of the internal processing unit internal processor how it is going to be designed all these things will be discussed in the organization computer organization before knowing how does the computers will be organized we have to know the classification of the computers how does computers are categorized okay so classification of computers is important because computer is an electronic calculating machine which accepts the input in the form of a digital form process it according to the stored instruction what it has to do it is already stored it is called as an instruction or program and produces the result or the output on the output device okay so it uses many components to perform these task okay the internal operation of the computer is as shown in the diagram we have the fetch decode execute process fetches retrieve the next instruction from the memory it is indicated by the counters and registers and then it increments the counter value then we have decoding it that is decode the bit pattern in the instruction register that is the next step that is decoding it from encoder to decoder we use the decoder there for decoding the bit pattern then execute perform the action requested by the instruction in the instruction register so we use registers counters encoders decoders that we have studied in the last unit isn't it so we use all these components to perform these things that is accepting the input processing it and producing the output how does the computer is going to do let's know about this okay the classification of computers is like this we have different categories of computers 
Why? Because there are various computers which separate or which are different from one another in their capacity, their uh, working capacity, their memory capacity, speed, everything will be changed or everything will be different in different set of computers. So let's see the classification of the computers. We have a microcomputer, laptop computer or you can call it as laptop, workstation, supercomputer, mainframe computer, handheld computer and the multi-core computers. Okay, let's see each of this. The first thing is the workstation computer. What are these workstation computer? Here you can view the workstation computer, how it looks. It looks like a normal computer we generally use, isn't it? So, it is the powerful desktop computer. You guessed it right. It is a desktop computer or personal computer or in general it is called as a PC designed for specialized task. What are those specialized tasks? Generally used for task that requires a lot of processing speed. What are those tasks is like fetching, operating, performing, playing a music, playing a video, playing something or able to play the game in that or to perform the calculations, all these things, installing the softwares, developing the programs, all these things can be done with the workstation computer, okay. Can also be called as an ordinary personal computer attached to a network that is a local area network or LAN in short called as where you can connect different workstation computers to communicate the data, okay. Then we have the supercomputer. So this is the picture of a supercomputer. A computer that is considered to be fastest than any other category. It is called a supercomputer. It is fastest than any other computer in the world. It is used to execute the tasks that would take a lot of time for other computers. So its advantage is speed. Supercomputer is known for its speed as well as memory capacity. It has enormous uh, size of memory or memory capacity is huge and along with that the execution speed is also very high. It is the most speedy computer in every, all the categories of computers. So we have the modeling weather systems which forecast, which helps in forecasting the weather, genome sequence. So these supercomputers are not used for general purpose or general common man will not be able to use these supercomputers. So supercomputers are mainly needed for high level applications. What are these high level applications is weather forecasting, genome sequence in the biotechnology field or any other thing which needs higher speed uses the supercomputer. Then we have the mainframe computers. Here is the diagrammatic picture of the mainframe computer. It is a large expensive computer. It is considered as the large as well as expensive type of computer capable of simultaneously processing data for hundreds or thousands of users. It is capacity is it can thousands of users can connect to a mainframe computer. It doesn't have the other components like input or output. It doesn't have it does have only processors and memory which store and process the data. How do you use these computers is by the use of the personal computers. So personal computers, thousands of personal computer can be connected to a single mainframe computer. It is used to use store, manage and process large amount of data. Gigabytes, terabytes, zigabytes of data are stored and processed which are need to be reliable, secure and 
centralized. These data need to be reliable, secure as well as centralized. So you can use the mainframe for handling large size of data. Along with that, we have the handheld computers. Handheld is the most uh, compatible, compatible compact computers. Okay, it is also called as the PDA or personal digital assistant like this. You may have viewed these computers. Okay, they are not full fledged computers, but they work similar to the definition of the computer. Okay, a computer that fits into a pocket. It fits into your pocket, isn't it? Runs on the batteries. You need not to have the power. It is a cordless, wireless PDA, that is wireless computer, which runs on batteries and is used while holding the unit in your hand. Since it, you can you, you hold in your hand and can use it, it is called as the handheld computer. It is typically used as an appointment book, like a directory, an appointment book, address book, calculator and notepad. So these, these are replaced by today's smart mobiles, isn't it? So we have the handheld computers. So mobile is also a part, a kind of the handheld computer, isn't it? Then we have the multi-core computers. So multi-core computers, what are the use of these multi-core computers? So multiple core or multi-core is a parallel computing platform. It contains different processors, number of processors which are connected. Okay, many cores or computing elements in a single chip. It will have variety of tasks. It can perform variety of tasks. That is a multi-core computer can perform multiple tasks at the same time. Okay, in a single chip, within a single chip, all the components or all the working instruction sets have been implemented. Example is we have the Sony PlayStation, Core 2 Duo, computers that we use, i3 and i7, today's processor that we use in our laptops and computers are multi-core processor. They can have multiple sets or multiple computing capability in a single chip. In one chip, it can have multiple variants or capability of carrying out multiple tasks. Okay. Now, let's look at the functional units of a computer. A computer in its simplest form, no extra gadgets, no extra connections, in its simplest form comprises of five different functional units. We have five different functional units which are considered as input unit, output unit, memory unit, arithmetic and logic unit and control unit. So we have the diagrammatic representation of this input unit, output unit, memory unit, arithmetic and logic unit and the control unit. Okay, here we have the representation of the units. So this is called the IO devices or input output devices and we have the memory which is the intermediary between the input units and the processor. So it is called as the processor or the central processing unit. So this will help in processing. The input unit accepts the input. Memory unit gets the data, stores it and gives it to the arithmetic and logic unit. The control unit controls the operation in the arithmetic logic unit or in short it is called as the ALU like we call this as the CPU. Arithmetic logic unit will be controlled by the control unit. 
the processed data again comes to the memory unit from the memory unit output will be produced in the output devices so this is these are the five functional units that are used in the computers okay let's see each of these units first is the input unit the computer accepts the encoded information in a digital form or in a normal form encoded form the information is accepted through the input units okay the standard input device or general input device that we use is a keyboard all right whenever a key is pressed so here we have the input units whenever a key is pressed keyboard controller there will be controller for every button that button when you press a button a the signal will be communicated to the controller unit controller sends the code to the cpu or memory that a a has been pressed the user has pressed a or button a is pressed store that a in the memory and process it so it will store and process it if there is nothing to process it just keeps it in the memory okay so we have various input devices example is the mouse that we generally use joystick which is generally used for playing the games tracker ball will be having the balls to track the movements so in mouse in a older mouse we used the tracker balls to track the movement of the mouse then we have the light pen which shows the data which accepts the data like you can use the light pen to read the lines of a textbook digitizer which translate the digital the scanner that like we use the scanner and we have the barcode scanner you may have viewed the barcode scanners in the malls isn't it or the uh, shopping complexes where when you take a product in front of the handheld scanner it is called as the handheld scanner or barcode scanner it scans the lines that are printed over the product and reads the details isn't it so whatever whatever device which provides the data to the computer is called as an input device okay it inputs or inserts the data into the computer so it is an input device then we have the memory unit what is the use of memory unit is you need memory to store everything isn't it this is not the only one time use computer you will be using computer several times right so for that we need the memory unit memory unit stores the program instructions codes instructions programs line of codes whatever you call it stores the instruction which are called as the code the datas which are needed to run that code and results of the computations every instruction processing output everything will be stored in the memory unit so there are two memory unit one is the primary memory unit or main memory primary memory or main memory or non volatile memory you can call it as or permanent memory it has so many names primary main memory then secondary or auxiliary memory we have the secondary as well as the auxiliary memory these are the memory devices that we generally use okay let's look at the primary memory primary memory is a semiconductor memory that provides access at high speed okay it is the primary memory it uses the run time program instructions that means the instructions that are needed to run a computer are called as the run time program instructions and operands are stored in the main memory we use the operands 
that are stored in the main memory okay again main memory is classified again as rom and ram why do we use the rom and ram rom stands for read only memory and ram stands for random access memory okay the rom is a read only memory which is a permanent memory which cannot be erased which is now also called as the non volatile memory it holds the system programs and firmware routines most of the instructions that are needed for the future will be stored in the rom or read only memory you cannot write to it you can only read from it that is why is called as read only memory such as bios that is basic input output system post io drivers the basic uh, softwares or programs that are needed to run a computer or start run and shut down a computer the basic operations of the computers will be carried out by the programs written in the read only memory okay which are essential to manage the hardware of a computer who is going to manage the hardware of the computer if you just keep the monitor keyboard cpu and mouse it will not work you need the brain which is the brain of the computer it is the programs not the processor even processor needs program to run so programs are the real brain of the computer so these processors will be stored or process or programs will be stored in the read only memory then we have the ram or the random access memory is termed as read or write memory you can read as well as write the data into it or the user memory that holds the runtime program instruction and data but the ram holds only temporary type of data while primary storage is essential it is volatile in nature and expensive volatile is when you shut down the computer when you switch off the computer all the data that are stored in the ram will be erased you will not find anything in the ram okay the additional requirement of memory could be supplied as an auxiliary memory that is extra memory can be used at a cheaper cost okay secondary memories are non volatile in nature secondary memory or permanent memory are non volatile in nature okay then we have the next thing that is the arithmetic and logic unit how do we use the arithmetic and logic unit the name itself says that it performs the arithmetic operations and the logic operations the alu or arithmetic logic unit consists of the necessary logical circuits which are the logical circuits included in the alu is the adder the comparator subtractor all these things will be included in the arithmetic and logic unit in total whatever is needed to perform the calculation all those circuits will be included in the arithmetic logic unit it can perform the operations of the arithmetic that is addition multiplication division subtraction everything of two numbers it is an example it can perform the arithmetic operations on any size of numbers okay then the last thing is the output unit all these things have been done memory to be stored Mem in memory we have stored the data all the things have been done the next thing is if it is processed and kept as it is what is the use of computers we need to know what we have done whether we have done right or wrong what we have done how do we know so we need something which shows us what we have given and how it is giving back to us so for giving back the data that we have given we use the output unit so the computer after computation returns the results it results gives the computer results the error messages if the 
data you have given is incorrect, it produces the error messages, etc. via the output unit. The standard output device that we use is the video monitor, the general monitor that we use or an LCD or TFT monitor or other output devices that we use is the printers, plotters or the projectors, anything which gives the data back to us are called as the output units. The last is the control unit. What does the control unit will do? The control unit coordinates. It is nothing doing else but it just coordinates. You need someone to coordinate these units, input unit, output unit, memory and ALU. You need somebody to control these things, coordinate these things, isn't it? Like we have the traffic signals, like we have traffic police, which co who coordinates the movement of the vehicles, isn't it? Like that, we need a part in a computer which coordinates the activities of all units by issuing the control signals like our brain issues control signal. If I want to move a finger, a hand or head or move the eyes or mouth, that it cannot happen automatically. The brain must send a signal to the components, our body parts, isn't it? Like that, there will be a unit which coordinates between different parts of the computer by issuing the control signals, okay? The control signals issued by the control unit will govern or holds the or controls the data transfers and then appropriate operation and storing the data in the memory, everything will be done by the control unit. Along with that, control unit interprets or decides the operation or action to be performed, what must be done, which software must be uploaded, which is the program that needs to execute. Everything will be decided by the control unit and accordingly the electric signals will be passed to the other units of the computer which makes the computer to work. Here we have the diagram of the control unit. We have the control unit. There will be an instruction register which produces the instruction what the control unit, what which signal has to be passed to the signal, uh, the to the components like this. So control units will have the flags and clock which sets and resets the control. When there is a signal to be sent to one of the unit, control will be set. When uh, signal has to stop, control will be reset. Okay, like switching on and off. Okay, so control signals will be sent within the CPU. Control signals even will come from other units. All the coordination of the components will be done by the control unit using various instructions and the bus. Okay, what are bus is nothing but the connections, wires that we use or the connections which connect the components and the control unit. They are called as the bus. Let's know more about these things in the coming sessions. Thank you.